The Wii Shop theme is a fascinating example of quality overriding every other factor in determining a song's popularity. If you somehow aren't aware, the Wii Shop theme is somehow one of the best known pieces of video game music out there, accruing millions of views on YouTube and spawning dozens of cover versions and mashups and memes. It's just about universally beloved, even by people who never owned a Wii or don't really listen to video game music. This piece is, against all odds, a global phenomenon. I say against all odds because it really doesn't make any sense on paper. The piece is written pretty specifically to be elevator music, which is not a style typically known to excite today's youth. The basic formula for elevator music is to take a bossa nova, play it on bad MIDI instruments, and then pump it through the worst speakers known to man. This vibe is brilliantly leveraged by the Wii Shop theme to evoke the kinds of sterile shopping centers that we've come to associate this style with. And you can almost picture yourself pushing a shopping cart down the Wii Shop's menu as you browse the newest selection of downloadable wares. But more than just a clever choice of style, this piece is irreverent, funny, and brilliantly written, and most importantly, for my purposes anyway, a perfect showcase of the fundamentals of jazz songwriting. How could that possibly be true? Well, to understand that, we first need to understand a little bit about the bossa nova style. Bossa Nova is a genre of Brazilian music that emerged in the 50s and 60s, taking the Brazilian samba and slowing it way down for a smooth, relaxing feel. It's the kind of music that evokes the ebb and flow of the waves coming up against the shore, the kind of music that puts you on a beach somewhere with a drink in your hand. That's why it's such an incongruous fit coming out of tinny speakers in a grocery store somewhere, and that, I think, is why elevator music gets its reputation, but I digress. There was a lot of cross-pollination going on between American jazz and Latin American Afro-Cuban music in the 40s and 50s, with American musicians taking Afro-Cuban rhythms to develop jazz on one side, and Latin jazz taking American developments in harmony and musical structure on the other. This culminated in the bossa nova boom of the 50s and 60s, and with good reason. You can imagine putting on an Antonio Carlos Jobim LP in your bachelor pad with your red velvet smoking jacket on and feeling like the coolest cat in the universe. This bossa nova style took a traditional Brazilian rhythmic approach, albeit slowed way down, and combined it with a more complex harmonic and melodic approach taken from American jazz. This approach to harmony and melody came from the canon of music we now refer to as jazz standards, songs that typify the style and are still performed by jazz musicians to this day. Understanding the theory behind these can help us understand jazz, what can be a bit of an impenetrable style to the average musician. So, I thought that using a piece we all know and love, like the Wii Shop theme, we could lay out the fundamentals of jazz composition and maybe get an appreciation for the wider genre as a whole. Let's listen to a little bit of the Wii Shop theme and then we'll break down some of the harmonic and melodic language being used to show you what I mean. First, the upper extensions of a chord, the 9th and major 7th and 13th, can be painfully beautiful, and the healing sound of the bossa nova partially comes from the beauty of these kinds of notes. In particular, the sound of the major 7th moving down to the major 6th is just delicious. Tell me you couldn't sit here and listen to this on repeat for hours. The melody of the Wii Shop theme is based around a simple motif that accesses the beauty of this movement. The melody starts on the ninth of the chord, an A note over a G major 7 chord, which already sounds gorgeous. This A note walks down the scale to the root, down to the seventh, and then resolves down to the sixth, in this iconic syncopated rhythm. The ending of this phrase gives us that juicy seventh to sixth motion, and it is just delicious. Also. The E note that we end on here works great jumping up a fourth to hit that A again to start the next phrase. 
Leaps of a fourth in the melody always sound strong, to the point that without the underlying harmony, it might even feel like A is the root note here. But it's not the root note, and thanks to the underlying G chord, it takes on the beautiful color of the major ninth. This iconic rhythm and simple structure make this motif perfect for shifting through different keys, too, which is an integral part of the standard jazz style. American jazz music of the 40s and 50s was in large part defined by a very specific harmonic approach that would string together a series of 2-5-1 progressions in different keys. A 2-5-1 progression is a way of resolving to the home chord of a key, and you can think of it kind of like how a joke is structured. The 2 chord sets the scene, the 5 chord creates tension, and then the movement to the 1 chord releases that tension and gives us a sense of resolution. You can think of it as an evolution of the classical 4-5-1 cadence, because that's exactly what it is. This harmonic motion from the 2 to the 5 to the 1 chord is so strong, and the setup punchline formula so good at establishing a key quickly, that you can launch yourself into a completely different key using a 2-5-1, and it'll work perfectly to get you there without any confusion. The biggest reason why the 2-5-1 is so perfect for cycling through different keys is the voice leading, specifically the way the 3rd and 7th of each chord move through the progression. And this right here is the key to understanding jazz harmony. There's an idea floating around that jazz artists just slap the 7th on every chord and call it a day, but if you've ever tried that yourself, you've probably found the end result lacking. The inclusion of the 7th to every chord is entirely practical to facilitate the voice leading that we find in the 2-5-1 progression. In this example, in the key of B-flat major, we see the 7th and 3rd of the 2 chord, C minor, are the notes B-flat and E-flat. Moving to the 3rd and 7th of the following 5 chord, F7, we see the E-flat stay the same and the B-flat slide down just a half step to hit an A. This makes the infamously dissonant tritone interval. Then, we'll notice the resolution of that tension to the final one chord B flat major 7, as the A note stays the same and the E flat again just slides down a half step to land on the third of the one chord D. This voice leading is simple, but it's beautiful even in this stripped down form. This super solid foundation is what allows all of those complex upper extensions that jazz harmony is known for to work. And in fact, those fancy upper altered extensions are almost always a result of trying to smoothly voice lead notes on top of this 3 and 7 foundation. If we pile on the 5th and 9th of both the 2 chord and the 1 chord, you can see how easily these notes can slide down chromatically through the 5 chord to get from point A to point B. This gives us an F7 flat 9 flat 13, but it's really not as scary to use these altered extensions as it might seem once you understand the point of them as means to an end. We'll see a Wii Shop example of this in a minute, hold on. Even when we leave the home key and throw two fives in from other, more distant keys, this third and seventh voice leading is always incredibly smooth. If we chart out the third and seventh of the Wii Shop theme's whole progression, we see that it starts in G major, dips into a 2-5 in B flat, back to G major, checks out A minor for a sec, then back to G, then on to E major, then down to D major, over to A major, and then we end off with one last 2-5 in G major to set up the loop back to the top. That's six different keys in 32 bars. Moving from the 4 chord of G, C major 7, to a 2-5 in the key of B flat, C minor 7, to F7, seems like it could be a really drastic departure, but it settles back smoothly into the key of G major just as quickly as we left. If we look at the 3rd and 7th of each chord, we can see why. The 3rd and 7th of C major 7, B and E, move down a half step each to get us to a C minor 7, and then the classic 2-5 voice leading that we went over takes over as this B flat moves down to the 3rd of the following F7 chord. Getting back to the key of G major, we land on a B minor 7 chord next, a tritone jump away from the F7 before it. Surely that would sound super jarring, right? No, it doesn't because the A note can stay the same between the two chords, and the E flat note resolves down a half step to the third of B minor, D. This voice leading is just as smooth as our normal 5 to 1 cadence, even though the bass note is jumping by a tritone underneath. 
We also get the organ coming in and giving us the ninth over this F chord, resolving it down a half step to the fifth of B minor, trying to make the motion even smoother than it already was, and showcasing how and why upper extensions are actually used in jazz music. The final cadence of the first half of the tune, moving from A minor 7 to A flat 7 to G major 7, is also driven entirely by the voice leading. The jazz nerds among you may recognize this as a tritone substitution, a relatively common move in jazz standard harmony, to the point that I hear this middle chord as an A flat 7, even when the 7th of the chord isn't actually there. Coming from the previous phrase that dipped into the key of A minor with this A minor G sharp diminished to A minor move, we see the inner voices moved to a B and F over top of the G sharp diminished chord. These resolve perfectly to the third and fifth of A minor, the C and E notes that we see here, with the melody hitting the ninth on top. Moving from this A minor 9 to A flat to land on the final G chord here, the third of this A minor chord follows your typical 2-5-1 voice leading, staying the course over the A flat and resolving down to the third of G major at the end. The ninth on top follows typical upper extension voice leading practice too, moving chromatically down to land on the ninth of G major at the end. But the middle voice, starting on this E, wants to land on the major seventh of G to get that beautiful G major 9 sound. And so, it walks up chromatically from E to F to F sharp. This technically gives us an A flat 6 9 chord as a substitute for our regular D7, and it sounds so hip. This leads into a lightning quick turnaround into the key of E major all of a sudden. E and G are pretty distant keys, but this just goes to show you the power of the 2-5-1. From G major 7 to F sharp minor 7 to B7 to E major 7, you can see how the voice leading barely has to break a sweat to get us there on time and without any bumps. There's even a little chromatic motion in the inner voices giving us a B7 flat 9 in between. This approach to harmony, where the interest is driven by weaving around different keys using 2-5-1s as the main vehicle to get through them, facilitates melodies that take a motif and repeat them, altering notes as necessary with each repetition to fit with whatever key you happen to be in at the time. We see this approach used for a ton of melodies in the jazz standard canon as well as in our Wii Shop theme. The opening phrase that gave us that sweet, sweet 7 to 6 motion over our first G major chord has been shifted around verbatim to fit over the chord at hand all throughout the piece, first jumping up to the 4 chord, C, and now showing up to give us the exact same motion over E major. Moving from here, much like we saw over the earlier shift to C minor 7 from C, this melody is repeated note for note with just one small alteration. The seventh is flattened to fit the melody to the E minor chord underneath. Rather than the beauty of the seventh resolving down to the sixth over a major chord, this new version showcases some of the voice leading inherent to the 2 5 progression below spelling out the move from E minor 7 to A7 as we resolve to the following D major. Then we get the original major chord version of the motif shifted to start on the 9th of this D major 7 chord. There is really very little happening here with the melody, it's just moving around to fit the chords underneath. But with harmony this compelling, there's very little melodic development necessary to make the music interesting. A lot of jazz standards are written exactly like this, with one simple melodic idea repeated over and over, altered just enough to keep up with the shifting landscape of 2-5-1s in various keys. The composition is very much led by the harmony, with the melody playing an almost supportive role, completely the opposite of modern popular songwriting. 
After some similar twisty harmonic moves bring us to the key of A major, the final chord stabs bring back that iconic rhythm that opened up the piece in the first place and set up one last 2-5-1 back to the original key of G, as this A major 9 shifts to an A minor 9. But this final D7 chord setting up the loop back is an interesting one. If you'll take a close look, you may be scratching your head as to how I could even label this as a D7 chord. There's no D for one, just the notes C, F sharp, and a B on top. That hardly looks like a chord at all. Well, as you know now from making it this far into the video, the 3rd and 7th from the previous A minor chord will want to move to the C and F sharp tritone for our 5 chord D as a way of creating tension to resolve neatly back to our tonic G major chord. This voice leading movement is so strong that even without the root of the chord in play, the motion of these 3rds and 7ths by themselves can imply the desired harmony perfectly clearly. The B note on top is held over from the previous A minor chord to make an implied D13 chord, a lovely way to resolve down to the 9th for the start of our G major 9 melody. By the time the Wii Shop theme is finished, you've probably become very familiar with the sound of the 251 shifting through different keys, and the simple, catchy melody is the perfect vehicle to showcase these changes in a clear and fun way. Though you may be hard pressed to find a jazz school professor who would admit it, this tune might be one of the best examples of foundational jazz harmony you could find. Not just because it uses these fundamental aspects of the music and uses them with clarity, but also because it's inarguably one of the best written pieces in video game music. A piece doesn't blow up to this level of cultural relevance through a clever choice of style alone. It's the quality of the writing that inserted this piece into your brain and allowed it to stay there for days after you'd closed the shop and turned off your Wii. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for checking out the video. You can go to my Patreon if you want to support the channel and get my transcription of the Wii Shop and Me Channel themes. And I'll see you all in the next one.